I, my name is Carrie Gill. I'm a judge in the First Judicial Circuit. I'm the at-large circuit judge, currently serving, um, covering all nine counties of the circuit. So there are a lot of different judicial positions out there. So, so in order to explain a little bit what's different about my position and what it is, is the at-large circuit position. So at-large circuit judge covers all nine counties. So we both uh, can be assigned to all nine counties and are elected in all nine counties. And those are Jackson, Williamson, Saline, Pope, Pulaski, Massac, Alexander, Union, and Johnson. Um, I was appointed about a year and a half ago by Justice Carmeier in the Supreme Court. And I saw where you were confirmed unanimously, right? Yes. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it was unanimous. And but this is a position you want to continue, yes. right? So why did you want to continue on as, as judge? So it's an amazing position and all we, we elect our circuit judges. So even though I was appointed by the Supreme Court in order to retain my position um, and keep it, I must then run for election. So you must run one time um, for the election. Now how do you feel that you meet the requirements for this particular office? Well, prior to my appointment, I um, was an attorney in Carbondale and served many of the counties, Springfield and South, uh, in both uh, civil trial litigation and uh, then doing um, other other kinds of work um, such as wills and trusts or contracts. Well integrity and um, ethical conduct are key for this particular position, this office. So how do you feel that you hold yourself accountable, especially in those compartments? Well that's the first thing that um, first and foremost is a lawyer and of course judge's reputation. It's a small community. We practice, we know all the attorneys in the area and the reputation that you build is your foundation so you must hold yourself um, to the highest standards and have um, follow the law. So our, my next question then what are specific issues confronting judges in Southern Illinois and I guess in particular in the the first judicial circuit? Well there are many issues I think that um, not just confronting judges but confronting um, the whole judiciary. So that's really what it is, is some of the concerns and, and a big part of it is um, access to justice and self-represented litigants, those that choose to represent themselves and those that cannot afford an attorney and cannot find um, representation. So it's really about bringing justice to those people appearing in the courtroom. The court process is open to everyone, but if you are there facing um, matter whether it's civil or criminal and you can't afford an attorney or you don't have an attorney it can be a scary process. So can you provide maybe an example of how judges act and rule impartially because you had talked about um, you're gonna see the criminal and you're gonna see the the civil cases both and how you want everybody to be treated fairly. Can, can you give an example since you've been in the position now? Yes, so it has been a year and a half and I cover a variety of different dockets. I cover the traffic docket I co in Williamson County primarily is where I am, but I go to other counties as well. I cover the traffic docket, I cover um, a miscellaneous docket and a, a docket that deals with real estate, so a civil docket. I go to Massac County one day a week and cover their criminal misdemeanor docket. So I do see a variety of criminal and civil cases in a, a high volume with the traffic docket and it really is about following the law, trying to explain the statutes um, even to someone who's self-represented and following that and, and helping them really feel a sense of fairness when they've left the courtroom. That might not be the decision that they wanted to have but if they can understand um, what the ruling was based on and that it was based on the facts. Um, and being polite, being respectful. So the, one of the key issues about being impartial, and this really is a unique process, our country and our founding fathers wanted to elect our judges. Our judges are elected by the people. So we are part of the political system and on the ballot in the election, but judges are in a different category because really our personal beliefs do not necessarily play a role um, and should not play a role. Our personal beliefs should not play a role in the courtroom because our decisions are based on the facts in front of us and based on the law as it's written, both the statutes and the case law. So it really, the politics of it and the election part of it is completely separate from the job. Okay. So even though I may run as one po political party, 
uh, my personal beliefs align with that. However, the role that I have on the bench and my service is about following the, applying the facts to the law as it's written and making a decision, um, and a fair decision. Kind of speaking um, with the economical portion of it, how does your, your office in particular affect the way funds, I guess, <laughs> work, especially when, with a tighter budget in the counties? Well, funds are definitely an issue, and it really is something that is sort of in the background. It's not um, on the forefront because first is the right to the court system and the right to access. But the county funds are very similar in concept to the litigants' funds. You know, there there's an expense for them being there, whether they're missing work. Some people have um, children they're taking care of and they must pay someone to watch them. Some people are taking care of ill spouses or parents and they must pay someone else to take care of them while they're away. So there is a county expense um, and obviously a tight budget and the litigants expense. So the main way that I try and control the costs across the board is to be efficient, um, both with uh, the time of the people that are in front of me, the clerk's time and, and the time in the courthouse and the courtroom, trying to uh, set cases together, group them together. If someone has several speeding tickets, they can have them all grouped th together even if they didn't occur at the same time. One of the exciting things and one that goes to my qualifications and uh, serving on the bench and continuing in my service is that I've been working hard since January to start a drug and veteran specialty court and we are very close to being up and running for, um, it will start in Williamson County serving the entire first judicial circuit and expanding to other counties um, when, we, when we get up and going. And so that does also draw on the county resources. So I've been working with different departments and uh, different, um, both the public defenders, uh, state's attorney, probation, the sheriff's department, everybody looking at where we have costs, where we can be conservative, and where we can make sure we don't have an adverse effect on the county's budget. Okay. Now I want to talk about temperament and personality. Um, when you're sitting in a courtroom, the first thing you pay attention to is the judge, judge's reactions, judge's responses. So how does your personality play into the courtroom? Or what kind of personality, I guess, do you bring to the courtroom? Yes, I think that's very important is uh, the temperament of the judge. And so there's often a very busy docket. There may be 100 people in the traffic court and no one wants to be there. So I try and just be completely um, up front with everybody when they get there that you know there may be a hundred people in the courtroom and I understand they have somewhere they need or want to be and what what I need from them and explaining the process and that we will try and make things as efficient as possible and get them where they need to be but also they need to have an opportunity to be heard and so I try and just communicate that and I try and be respectful and uh, you know, I'm asking them to be respectful to me, and so I want to show them that respect as well. So I think that my temperament and as a mom, you know, trying to do the same as, as we raise our kids. And so we just try and be uh, even-tempered, and um, when something is not going well, kind of taking a step back. If, if it's such that everybody's... Uh, tempers are getting escalated or maybe it's a heated argument between two attorneys in the courtroom or maybe um, a litigant is there and very visibly upset about something asking if you need a break maybe we take a break and everybody take a moment to compose themselves and then come back you know we're talking about property or um, you know, we're talking about very important things in the courtroom, somebody's freedom, you know, whether they're going to be in jail or incarcerated, whether they're going to have their children or lose their children, you know, and their property, their home. You know, it can be a very emotional and very mm -hmm. stressful time in the courtroom, so really just trying to be understanding of that and if a break is needed to, to kind of get back to where we need to be. I think, too, we would also assume the position would also make you need to be a little firm in some situations. Is that what you've had to experience so far? That's true. You know, in order to maintain control of the courtroom, it does take a lot of um, sometimes firmness. And, uh, you know, as the judge, you're really setting the tone, the demeanor, and the tenor of the courtroom and how things are going to go. So, you know, it does sometimes take 
you know, often firmness and um, my, you know, I have great parents who, who were loving and firm at the same time in raising me and I hope that, you know, they've uh, given me those skills to, to be compassionate yet firm when I need to be in the courtroom. But I wanted to ask you about the judiciary advisory poll and you were obviously recommended um, which is really really awesome um, some scores I was kind of curious about weren't as high as some of the others so I just wanted to ask you in terms of someone who may be voting looking at that how you would meet the requirement of the office in in that way to make them feel more confident if they were just going by the scores sure well yes and I'm, I'm very happy to be have been uh, recommended uh, by the Illinois State Bar Association, uh, which is conducts a poll of our, our peers. Um, this is mailed to, it's mailed out, and so it's uh, utilized by um, a number of different people who may or may not um, know me as well as, as others. I did, as I mentioned, some uh, much litigation. I also did a lot of uh, transactional work that wouldn't bring me necessarily in contact with a lot of attorneys. Um, so I'm very um, happy to, to be recommended and um, believe that the scores were, were across the board well. So. I just, um, thought it was interesting that healthy, now you scored absolutely high on the, health, on the healthy mark beating out the opponent. So what are, do you know what the criteria is for the healthy portion? You just kind of like to live a healthy, healthy life? To make sure you're on top of things. <laughs> yes. So there's on these polls, there's no, you know, there's not much criteria given or much um, explanation of the questions given. So okay. it's a little hard for sometimes those uh, scoring to to really know, um, which is why overall they go with the recommended or sure. not recommended. Okay. Um, but I mean, I think a lot of people probably know that I like to run. I like to run. Um, 5Ks and I've run several half marathons and enjoy that. And I think that the health goes to beyond the physical health, it goes to the mental health. And I think that it's very important for a judge to take care of themselves, both mentally and physically, and to have these activities. I like to run, it clears my mind and helps me think about things. And um, so I think it contributes to both mental and, and physical well being. So I guess my last question there, and is what is your view on cameras in the courtroom? As reporters, we like to be there, and, and obviously we like to be up close and personal and not just taking notes, and we like to rely back on what's been recorded so that everything is accurate. Um, so how do you feel as a judge? Well, that's, <laughs> so number one, you know, courtrooms are open to the public, and I think that's um, the first thing to look at. So you know, people can come and observe court, and I would welcome anybody to do so. Um, so people are, are invited. There are times when um, courtrooms are closed, and that's for um, juvenile matters and certain adoption matters, things that are not public, uh, um, open to the public. But for the most part, and the most of what I do, especially the traffic and criminal docket, there may be other people who are interested in the, in the results. And, um, and the, what happens in the courtroom is not often as glamorous as what we see on TV. So um, it's good for people to understand how court really works. And obviously, for the media to be able to participate in it. So it really, cameras in the courtroom, it's really about balancing two fundamental rights, and that is the right to um, uh, free speech and the, the media to be able to report on it, and the rights of the litigants there in the courtroom. You know, and, and the one thing that, that really is important to me, and, and I feel very strongly about the job, um, the position, I guess I feel very strongly about the position, is that you know, as a judge, we serve our community. So, and that's why when I explained about, you know, the impartiality and that we're impartial and we have to sometimes even put our personal feelings aside and make a decision under the law because we serve the community. So I serve all nine counties as the at-large judge. Um, and it really is about service in my um, time as an attorney, I tried to do a lot of pro bono projects. I worked with SIH and I worked with Gumdrops Feeding Kids and worked with um, some other uh, entities and 
it was very important to be a part of the service community. Now as a judge, I can't do some of those same projects because we have certain requirements on what we can and can't do, but I can serve the community in a different way. And my service, a large part of it is serving on the bench and being um, a mentor to you know students and to work on some of these education programs. And, and I serve the community and it really is, really is a, a job that it's an amazing job. It's very humbling and, and I'm really very blessed to have been given this opportunity to serve in this manner.